All right, Mauro Stara, welcome to the Real Estate Investing Fast Track. Been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks, interviewing you on really the business fitness connection and why business owners, specifically real estate investors, really need to make their health a priority. Today, we're going to have a nice tactical in-depth interview on what it takes to do that. And I know the listeners are going to get a lot of value from this. So first of all, thank you for coming on the show today, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So let's just get right into it. So before you got into fitness, tell me a little bit about your background, where you're from, what were you doing, and we'll kind of go from there. I was born in Switzerland. So I grew up in Zurich, beautiful Swiss city. And I was working in banking for five and a half years. And as I was in banking, I was already training on the side and transform myself and training people in person. As they saw my own transformation, people reached out and said, hey, can you help? Can you help me get in shape? And for me, it was like, wow, uh, incredible. Like I can serve those people with my passion. And I didn't think about being where I am today, to be honest. But fast forward, as I moved or started moving online with banking and training people in person, I burned myself out. I started to get heart issues. And as I fixed it, I saw, hey, wait a minute, like, so many guys, so many men, especially men senior to me, are in the same spot where they work their ass off, they're chasing wealth and, uh, and giving up their health in the process. And that's where I shifted and focused more on intensive and in-depth work with men. And that's fast forward where we are today. Awesome. So you were in banking, you went from a banker to a fitness guy. And it's, it's a Swiss bank. I remember watching uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. And yes. there was that part of the movie where like he was taking his money and he was like duct taping it to like his like wife at the times, like knees. And they got on the plane over to Switzerland. So uh, I guess I guess that's a big deal over there in Switzerland, the banking system. Maybe I should put some money over there. <laughs> yeah, well, there, you know, there's also Singapore, the which is I think is really good, maybe a little bit better uh, today. But uh, yeah, Switzerland is still, I would say, number two. They're good. And for me, it also helped me. And I think a lot of clients see, hey, this guy understands my lifestyle because I was you know, 8, 10, 12, 12 hours a day with all these guys, seeing them, their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions, their day-to-day -day rituals and habits. And it's not just another meathead at the gym who's going to prescribe me six days at the gym, two-hour workouts. This is different. Totally, man. So actually, I want to kind of start with something different here. This this little bit more, you know, kind of easier way to transition to the fitness space. So generally, and I'll tell you, I have limited fitness now and I work out, you know, every day and I try to eat reasonable. But a lot of people say like, okay, if you want to be fit, all you got to do is you got to exercise consistently and you got to eat reasonable, whatever that means. Obviously, those are very broad statements there, right? So how many days a week? If, if there, you, Let's say we have a 35-year-old male who is an active entrepreneur, they're successful financially, but they feel like their health is lacking. And let's just cover the exercise portion first, and then we'll get into the diet part. So what would you say would be a, a reasonable expectation and commitment they would need to invest in from a time standpoint to get good results from physical exercise? Because a lot of people think you have to go seven days a week, two hours a day, burn yourself out. And it's just not sustainable. You know what I mean? And there's an easier way to do it where you can get better results. Absolutely. And before I answer that question, I'll add to what you said with you have to eat healthy, healthy and move yourself. Yeah. That's absolutely true, but it absolutely helps nobody. It's kind of like saying you, you need to save more money than you spend. It's like, or you need to get more clients. Like, yeah, I know that, but like, it's too broad. Like, what does it mean to eat healthy for my body? What does it mean to exercise for my body? So going back to your question, I mean, if we say good results, three times 30 minutes a week are enough. If you want great results, I believe three times 45 to 60 minutes a week. That's all. Okay. So that's yeah. a lot less than probably people would think, right? Because they're thinking they got to just grind all day, you know, burn themselves out. Yeah. It's like, you know, in, in fitness, you have two identities. You have the ex-athlete, was in shape, you know, college captain, maybe pro football player, whatever. And he, he used to train every day, one, two hours. And now he's got a family and a business, multiple businesses. And that guy thinks, well, I, the only way for me to get back in shape is that old routine. And that right there is, you know, one of those myths. And then you have the fat kid where that guy's always been out of shape since small kid. 
And for that guy, he sees the guys who are in shape and they're working out every day, right? So again, it creates that perception, okay, either I'm going to stay obese, very overweight, or I have to live at the gym. So it's that black and white thinking that destroys a lot of people. Yeah, right. And they, they, they don't realize that there's like a happy medium where they can, because it sounds like the main thing is is really just thinking about this from a long-term perspective and not just getting fit once to get fit and then sliding right back into your bad habits. Like you want to change the identity of your clients and get them to have their standard get raised. So now, you know, instead of them getting fit, they're a fit person for life. You know what I mean? And then that is what ultimately is going to make them successful versus just going from, okay, I have a goal from I'm out of shape right now. And in six months, I want to be really in shape. And then like, what's next? You know, what's after that? What are the next six months look like? So I feel like, you know, that's the mentality people have to have. And that's what I do at work now. I'm certainly no expert, but it's like my objective with fitness is to just be in shape and be healthy, right? That's it. It's not to be a bodybuilder. It's not to be a track star. It's it's to be in shape and it's to feel good, to have energy, right? And to be able to have this fitness be a, you know, staple in my life to where when business problems come up, you know, I have the fitness that I can kind of rely on and it makes me feel better despite what's going on. No, no, I absolutely agree with what you said and your outlook to to fitness and health. And do, do you know Andy Frizzella? Yeah, I'm part of the so, uh, Arte crew or whatever. Oh, really? Me too. Yeah. I didn't know oh, that nice. you were. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So if you remember in one of the calls, I think it's like one of the very, very first calls that he did. He said, and he repeats that quite often, but one thing he, he really said there that stuck with me was, the sooner you accept that you have to do the work for the rest of your life, the easier it will get. And a lot of people will think like, mm, you know, I can put it off or I don't have to do this in my business, or my fitness, in my marriage, whatever it is. But the, the moment you realize, look, I have to do that every day, just like brushing your teeth, it's a lot easier to then do it because there is no other choice, so to say. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Cause then, you know, like no matter what it's, it's funny you use a teeth, brushing the teeth example. <laughs> I'm going to brush my teeth for six months. And then after that, I'm going to have all this momentum and I never have to do it again. You know, that's, that's a really good way to think about it. And that's what'll set someone up for long-term success. Yeah. I think uh, like this morning I was listening to an interview with Candice Owens and I think a lot of, and she brought up an example of marriage, right? Where people, they, they pimp themselves up, so to say, you know, the woman go to the gym, the man could, you know, work out everything. Everyone is at their peak when they get married. It's like, okay, I got him or I got her. Let's now it, I can let loose. But, uh, and, and it's very similar with fitness, right? Where people see there's a finish line, but really you have to remove that finish line. There's no finish line. You have to just drive and race forever. And once you remove that, I believe it offers a brand new perspective. 100% dude. There's a, you ever heard of the book called The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek? I heard of it. I haven't read it. That's like exactly what you just said. It's like when you just play games that are infinite, where there's no outcome, like in terms of a finish line, it sets you up to be successful in any area of your life. And fitness is the ultimate infinite game. So let's go back to what you said about that, that question I asked you earlier with three, three times a week, 45 minutes per session, right? So whatever that math ends up being, X amount of minutes a week. Someone's in a gym, whether it's their house or a physical, what are some things you would have them do in that gym to get best the best results in that limited time they're going to have during the week? Is it going to be more cardio? Is it going to be more weight training, resistance training? What are some things that they can be doing so when they're spending that time that they're going to commit to, over time, they're going to get the optimal results. And then we'll cover the diet part, which is probably more important. <laughs> resistance training only. What is resistance? Just what is what is that? Like? Lifting weights. So whether it's dumbbells, barbells, machines, cables. Yeah. Do, do you want me to go more tactical and detail? Yeah, yeah. Or, like because okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, without wanting to go too too deep and make this too technical, but you have like three big variables when it comes to training. You have volume, you have intensity, and your frequency. So frequency, very simple. How often do you hit the gym? How often do you train a specific muscle? volume how many sets of that muscle group will you hit and intensity is how hard will you hit it the moment you shift one it impacts the other two so if you drive one up the other two have to go down a little bit where sure. if you put one down the other can go up so there and the reason i bring that up and offering this context is 
there are many ways to skin a cat. You, there are many uh, roads that lead to Rome, right? As, as they say, I'm a fan of doing things smart and effective and very efficient. And so what most people do is they drive the volume up. So they do a lot of sets and they drive the frequency up a lot, like five, six days a week, high volume, a lot, lot, lot of volume, 10, 15, 20 sets per muscle group to the extreme. Sure. And the intensity will be low. You can't go to failure and push yourself really hard oh, if, you do, yeah, if you train every day for two hours. But studies show the, the moment you drive up the intensity and put down the volume and the frequency, you get the same results. So you have the choice. Do I want to suffer less in terms of pain and spend a lot of time there? For me, that is more pain. Or do I want to go in and out, be very effective, but I have to suffer a little bit. I have to push myself harder to make those sets or those reduced sets work as efficient, as effective as those high volume sets. And that's like the whole philosophy and why a lot of guys come to me because they don't want that ineffective way. And some guys want that and I'm not judging. It's like whatever works best for you. But 99% of the guys I work with, they want in and out quick. I want to save time. Okay, I can push myself and go hard. And I would even go so far and say that if you think you have like machine gun versus a sniper, if you have a machine gun and you know you have like 100 bullets, you'll not be very precise and give your best. You know, like, oh, I've got another 90 shots, another 50 shots, whatever. But if you have like a sniper, it's like, hey, I've got that one shot. I have to target. I have to be precise. I have to give my best. And so if you know you have less shots, then the quality will be better and you'll get way more ROI from that small investment versus the big investment will proportionally pay off less, if that makes sense. No, that makes a ton of sense. And that's that's what people need to really do because that's how you can be consistent for the long run. And you made that good example. You want to suffer during those you know, really effective, like deep sets or suffer even worse over time by just burning yourself out and and, and just, it's like working smart versus working hard, right? Yes. Working hard is a given in anything in life, but working smart is really where you're going to get those sustainable results. And it's like a, even though there's no shortcuts, this is kind of like a shortcut. Like, Hey, you're going to get the same results without having to go through the gauntlet of just doing ineffective stuff. So you mentioned weight training. So why weight training over cardio? And I'm not like, just, just out of cure. Cause like a, a lot of people say, oh, cardio, get, you know, and I, I love cardio myself. Like it just, for some reason, it makes me feel like I get my heart rate up every day. How come the straight strength training over that cardiovascular training? Yeah, I wouldn't say one over the other. If we, like, if we want to be efficient, then yes, but there's still room for cardio. It depends what type of cardio steps walking is also cardio. I recommend that to clients as well. I haven't added that in those workouts because a lot of guys will walk during call, you know, a call or a podcast like this where they can have a desk treadmill and get in their steps. So it's, again, easy ROI activity. But if we have those gym sessions and why do I want to lift weights at the gym yeah. and not spend that time doing cardio? I mean, there are many reasons, but like a big, big reason is when, when you lift weights done right, and you build more muscle mass, that muscle mass burns more calories at rest. So now you'll bur be burning a little bit more fat at rest when you're not lifting, where with cardio, the whole or the whole premise for most people, right? You said for heart health, most people don't do cardio for heart health. They do it for weight loss. Like, let me run, do some cardio to burn more calories. The downside there is, one, you'll be hungry. You'll eat back the same amount you burned and more. Studies mm -hmm. show that. That's and a great you only will be burning those calories when you're working. So the cardio for me is like the solo entrepreneur. It's like when he's working, he's making money. money. And when he's not working, he's not making money. Where resistance training is you put out the army and you train them, you, you, you offer them coaching, leadership, and then they go out and they do the work for you and you kind of get those dividends back. That's like a very simple way to see it. That's and a great analogy, dude. Yeah, and the main premise for that, there are other benefits. Like if you look at sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, right? If, if you look at, I think over 40 or 35, 40, people start to lose one to 2% of their muscle mass every year. And so avoiding that muscle loss increases longevity. 
way more important than burning some extra calories there if you want to look at that. So I, I don't want to see it as black and white, either or, but if I had to pick only one, yeah. it would be resistance training. And I'll say if you structure workouts where you do supersets, back-to-back sets in, in a simple way where let's say you do chest and instead of waiting two, three minutes to your next set, you can train abs or calves or back, one set there, one set there. So you're bouncing back and forth. The workout is shorter and that also increases heart rate. So you get still that elevation heart rate and some benefits of the cardio. So there, there's a lot you can do with resistance training to get almost all of the benefits from cardio. There's very little you can do with cardio to get those benefits resistance from resistance training, training. It's so much more effective and efficient. For, yeah, because you're yeah, if you're if you're actually doing the right work in a short period of time, you're you're ultimately getting cardio because of how you're doing the strength training. It's funny, I'll use one more analogy that I was thinking of when you said that. It's like in our business, like Jeremiah and I's business, it's like we fix and flip houses and wholesale, which is just transactional income. Like you make money once and it's over, right? Versus a rental property, you might not make as much, but every month you're getting paid, assuming the tenants are paying the rent. So with the weight training, it's like rental. And then over time, you're building all this wealth and equity and the whole thing. Versus like, okay, you can make your 50 grand on a fix and flip and then it's, it's over. You got to go find another one, aka do cardio. Versus with the weights, if you do that efficiently, you're building that momentum up to where when you're not working, you're still getting a lot of the benefits. In this case, you're burning the body fat, et cetera. So that's, that was a really good explanation. It's very practical for people. So let's shift over to the next part, the diet, right? The eating, the calories, what you eat, how you eat it, how often you eat, when you eat, yada, yada, yada. So the, the way I see it, and it's kind of like the process we work clients through is we first get in a blood panel. I recommend that to everyone that you get in advanced blood work for male hormones, health markers. And we can talk about that uh, more in depth after to have a, like a baseline where I'm at and what's going on, because that will determine the most optimal route for your nutrition and not just some macro calculator on the internet. Sure. You know, if you want okay and good results, but if you want world-class results, that will set you apart. And once you have the blood work and you look what's under the hub, kind of like an auto mechanic where you don't just bring in the car and say, like, oh, I think this is broken. No, it plugs in all you know the things and devices like bleep, 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 pings here and here and here, yellow, red. Okay, this is the issue. You get the diagnosis and now you can have the cure to it. So that's the way I see it in terms of the starting from the bottom. And then if we add one layer there, obviously the most important thing will be quantity. If you have eat, eat less, from that quantity, you will lose. And if you eat more, you will gain. Like that's just the concept of energy balance. All the people say, like, oh, but it's keto or it's fasting. It's like, yeah, you always remove one thing. With fasting, you remove one meal, breakfast. With keto, you remove one food group, carbs, right? So it's yeah. always all these fads, they were just remove one piece, but it goes into the energy deficit. So then you have the quantity, right? And that will be determined based on every client. What we do is get in a DEXA scan for every client in the beginning and have assessments. And we see exactly their lean mass, their fat mass. And that gives the most precision to create the exact quantity that client will be able to eat together with the blood work. So if you have someone very low testosterone, very low thyroid and low muscle mass, you probably know he can't have a high budget of calories where one has super high thyroid hormones, sky high testosterone, and is already very jacked, most likely, you know, he can start at a higher point. So that will vary, but again, quantity is key. And then you look at quality and you want to make sure that you have organic there as much as possible, grass fed, grass finished, wild caught, it's fish, fish low in heavy metals. So salmon will be better than let's say a tuna that is heavy in mercury. Small details there, but make sure you have good quality nutrition. No barcodes. That's always a good rule. Single food No barcodes like you can't get. It's not like processed, basically. Yes, exactly. So I'm not a fan of being too strict, but I'm also not a fan of, oh, I can eat donuts and chocolate and lose weight. It's like you, there's more benefits than just losing weight. When you eat quality, you get the micronutrients that your body needs. And I believe that is really the key there. We Again, we can talk more about it. I can share. I've got something prepared for micronutrients there to show you. But with the food quality, that's very, very important as well to make sure you get those in, those vitamins, minerals, trace elements. Because some recent studies have shown that they influence behavior as well. 
one study that absolutely fascinated me was it was a juvenile center where they have like teenagers, uh, young kids in prison. And they they split the groups in two, 100 young men here and 100 young men here. And one group, they gave them a multivitamin. And they waited, I think it was eight or 12 weeks or 16 weeks, like a few weeks. And within those few weeks, the group that didn't have a multivitamin, all 100 went back to prison because they committed a crime. But the other group that had a multivitamin, 46 went back to prison or didn't went, go back to prison. About half went back, half didn't go back. And so this really shifts the whole paradigm where, hey, wait a minute. Is it really that these kids kids are bad or criminals, so to say? Yes, they committed a crime, but what drove that crime? And I'm not saying it's 100%, but there's a high percentage that maybe they're just malnourished. And that's why they feel like shit. They think like shit. They're aggressive. They get irritated quick. They're not motivated. And then it happens, right? And so while your audience and you and I are not teenagers that are listening to this, it just shows the dramatic impact on the, the micronutrients have on our hormones and our health markers and behavior. And so if we know that to be so effective, and again, that multivitamin they gave them there, I'm pretty sure it's not like a super high quality dose. It's probably a basic one from Walmart. So if that is optimized, then the way you think will be completely different. So that's quality. You have timing, which is the when, when to eat. And yeah, that's a, a big of- people, like busy people. Yeah, and a, a lot of people downplay that. They're like, oh, as long as you eat less um, and it's good quality, you're fine. Yes and no. So end result, yes, but it has indirect impact on the end result. So let me explain that. They, they did a study where one group, they had eggs and steaks for breakfast. Same amount of calories. I think it was five, 600 calories. And then the other group had cereals and some fruits for breakfast. And it took them also, it was like five, 600 calories. So the group with cereals got hungry again. They, they had breakfast at eight and they got hungry at 10, 10, 30. The group with steak and eggs, they got hungry at 2 p.m. So yes, the quantity is the same, but when you eat and what you eat will determine often how much you eat. And part of it is nutrient density. Part of it is the um, making sure you don't have the carbs too early in the day allows your blood sugar to be more stable and have no spikes. And because you have no spikes in blood sugar and insulin, you don't crash. You have no cravings, no hunger. You have a lot of mental clarity, mental capacity. And that will make sure you, you start eating less naturally and not by force because everyone can say, hey, Greg, Here's your 1,500 or 2,000 or 2,500 calories. But how you compose them, what macro breakdown, when you eat those calories will have a dramatic impact if you're able to stick to the plan or not. And so that's like where the when comes in and knowing when to fuel yourself before the workouts, after the workouts, during the workouts, on non-workout days, when to eat carbs, when to eat protein, when to eat fats. And that is very, very important as well. Now that makes a ton of sense, especially with the sugar, you know, the sugar carb example. If someone's eating that at eight in the morning, just the nature of that kind of food is going to make them hungry because it's, it's, you know, not, it's like putting bad gas in the car. Basically that car is going to run out of gas. You know what I mean? You what are they, what's that analogy? You can't put bad gas in a Ferrari and expect it to go fast. Right? Like you fill the Ferrari up with 87 unloaded, it's going to run out of gas pretty quick, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's exactly that. But it's it's also knowing and that the blood work will show that if you're insulin resistant and you start eating that, it, it's just going to be way worse. Where if you're insulin sensitive and you want to bulk, then that is perfect. Like, for example, I'm bulking. I have to eat the carbs very early and a lot in the morning so that I'm hungry again for the next meal so I can get in all the calories I need. But if I'm cutting, I switch that completely. I don't want to be thinking about food and I don't want to be hungry. So, and understanding the science and the why behind it allows you to manipulate your nutrition and drive it in whatever direction you want without a lot of effort and willpower, which is the key. Yeah, that's with anything. Yeah, if you, yeah, the more you resist, the more it will persist, as they say. So 
I got a couple kind of BS diet, you know, stuff I hear. So there's this thing that I've dabbled in and you're probably going to just laugh when you hear this, the carnivore diet. I'm sure you've heard that before. Just eating meat like, like a baboon all day. You know, you eat eggs in the morning and bacon and then you do, you know, I don't know, a burger for lunch and then you do a piece of steak for dinner. You just straight up eat meat, well, animal products, you know, eggs, meat, et cetera. I've, I tried that last year. And I felt like I had more energy. I guess I didn't do this for like a year straight. I did this for like a month, basically. I felt like I had more sustained energy. But the truth, Mauro, is I knew that was not sustainable, right? Because I had all this resistance. Oh, my God, I can't eat the the bagel. I'm from New York originally. I can't eat the bagel. I can't eat the pizza. And then all of a sudden, there's like this mental battle going on. And I, I just and also like the fact that I was eating all that bacon it, it just didn't add like, something in it. I'm like, I can't, this can't be, this can't be like any of these extremes. I don't know. They, it just can't be something that is practical for people. You know, most people, I guess. Um, but have you, have you had clients come to you saying, Hey, I'm just going to do the carnivore diet and I'll eat steak all day. And, you know, I'll follow your workouts. Like, you know, you probably chuckle when you hear that because it's just complete garbage, most likely. So my marketing is very straightforward. No BS to the point that yeah. I filter out people like that <laughs> usually. But, you know, sometimes once, you know, once in a while, there will be someone who really wants to force it. And it's like, no, you, you can't do that. But I remember like years ago, I had a client and he really wanted to do that. And it worked for him initially, right? It's like, you know, once you set the internal frame yourself, hey, I'm only going to commit if I can do this and then you can do this, then okay. So it can be a good short-term thing. But I believe people have to understand why these diets are in place. Like a lot of diets have purpose and a lot of diets have no purpose. Like, so the vegan diet is even worse, right? Than like, a carnivore and so on because yeah. of the massive nutrient deficiencies where the carnivore is definitely not great as well there's a lot of nutrient deficiencies there that can happen or not so much as the vegan one but definitely a lot but i believe the carnivore is a great tool of an elimination diet for people with autoimmune issues gut health again it has to be diagnosed what exactly that person has but if we look at our gut if you have bad bugs bad bacteria they get fed by fiber and sugars. And if you do carnivore, and especially fasted carnivore, again, I'm not saying everyone should do that. It's like yeah. very, very rare situations. But when you fast, you starve out the bacteria. And when you eat only meat and fats, that bacteria will die off like really crazy. So that's why people do carnivore and say, oh, I feel amazing. It's like, yes, yeah. you had like terrible gut health issues. Yeah. So it may be very good for a specific small group of people to do it, heal their gut, and then start reintroducing those foods, right? That's why when people say, oh, my skin and so on. Yeah, of course, your gut was terrible. It was not necessarily the carnivore, right? Even though meat has a lot of benefits, it was you eliminating all the bullshit that you were eating and not feeding that bacteria in your, those bad bacteria in your gut. And now being able to heal your gut and now that gut is healed it's like oh i feel amazing it was carnivore yeah carnivore was the mechanism but once you understand that then that's the bigger context so it was really the the gut getting cured yes know, yes through the carnivore or, or, diet yeah or like keto which is like a huge What's fat the diet you don't oh, ketos just don't eat carbs right yes or yeah. like only up to 20 grams 10 20 yeah. grams of yeah. carbs yeah. Uh, carnivore is just meat and eggs you know fish but if you if you look at keto originally it was i think it went from john hopkins university again for people with autoimmune issues and you know severe health issues as a crazy elimination diet and then it got abused so to say like oh you know it's keto this why it works and look i have nothing against someone who crushes it and sees results with keto I've just never seen someone sustain it long term uh, because it's very unrealistic. So if someone tries on low carb and they feel really good, especially like you know South Europe, Mediterranean people, they, they like that like meat, fish, olive oil, uh, nuts. You know, they, maybe once in a while a little bit of carbs, but it's not like a lot of rice or grains like South America or Africa. If we look at history, if they do well on on a low carb diet. I'm not against that. You know, it's ultimately how you feel best and what works for you. 
But just saying everyone needs to do that or this is the way to go, it's, yeah, it's just a scam. Bad general advice. And that's why I like how you started when we flipped over to the nutrition section. You know, it, it, it's based on the individual person, right? Because you can't just give general advice to somebody. Because like you said, if someone has a bad gut, yeah, that will help. Yeah, it, it all has to, it, that's why it's like, I've tried to be as general as possible in this interview. Because like, it's just like, there's not one size for everybody, even though everyone might have the same goal of to be fit and to be healthy, right? So well said, my friend. So I want to transition more into this. How did you get into like your niche? Cause you, I, I follow you on Facebook, you know, and you, you provide great results for clients and I'm looking forward to speaking about that later on in the interview. How did you end up finding this niche of real estate investor clients who are financially sick? It's a very interesting to see how you were able to come into this niche and have so much success. Like, how did that end up happening? Because obviously fitness is very broad and you seem to have a really good niche established where you're really good at what you do and uh, definitely doesn't go unnoticed. So when I started, I had more like online marketers as clients. Like, yeah. yeah as exactly. agency owners and copywriters and a lot of people in the online space. And one... Um, one day I I signed up um, or I started working with Ryan Nickel, uh, which I believe, you know, yeah. from California. And he, he got like a dramatic transformation in six months and he posted it. And he's very big in real estate. And up to this day, he sent me about 30 clients, so 30 referrals from him alone. And that's how more and more real estate agents or investors came and one of them was adam adams i don't know if you know him yeah yeah, yeah colorado yes. yeah yes so I'm, I'm meeting actually on sunday we're gonna work out together in tulum and <laughs> jungle, gym? jungle gym yes uh, that's nice i've been there that's yeah, a... yeah yeah and so he also sent me like 15 20 people and then there's eric upchurch who is also big they're real estate investor ex-military uh, veterans that he's helping and uh, so it kind of went deeper and deeper and snowballed but ultimately like I didn't do much branding or marketing there my posts are usually for men businessmen it's not just real estate guys but uh, I guess just the results speak for themselves everyone hit them up like dude what are you doing like can you how give do you me... look like that What's yeah going? how do you look like that and now we have jeremiah who connected with us and he's like the latest guy with like a dramatic transformation and he's been sending me people left and right from cg collective genius and so it picks up there and you know it's uh, i've had a lot of guys wanting to copy my stuff and steal my websites and, and things but uh, well, you know, when I started out, I was looking always for like inspiration. What can I do? What is my idea? But ultimately, it's really the results because people will pay you for who you are and work with you for who you are, and not necessarily just what you have. Because like, oh, yeah. this is Jeremiah's trainer, Adam's trainer, or Ryan's trainer, and it's the results there that just spin off in in those circles. No, that's awesome. That makes a ton of sense. So you actually. Brought up my next talking point is like a, a nice case study of a client you work with. And I'll use Jeremiah because I was just on the phone with him before I actually had this interview with you scheduled. And it's like, he came to you. He was clear on what he wanted, right? He was clear on what he wanted. He's a very, uh, you probably know him well at this point, like he's very action oriented kind of guy, similar, you know, New York guy, loud guy uh, in a good way. And um, he got some great results, right? That guy, and I, I remember like when he, before he started with you, him and I, we were at the diner in Long Island by his house and we were just talking and he looked a certain way. And now I'm going to be at his house on Saturday at his barbecue and he looks a completely different way. And it's not like he was doing it for three or four years. Like he went all in. So what are some things that you really worked on with Jeremiah to allow him to have that kind of transformation? And I, I said something to him on the phone a couple months ago. I, he was, we were talking about something. I said, listen, dude, here's the deal. I said, your identity now is you are fit and you're not going back. Like him and I are like very close. We talk like multiple times a day. I said, dude, your identity, you are a fit person and you're going to be fit for life. And I'm not his like motivational coach or any shit like that. Like I'm just, I was just telling him the facts and he's like, you're right. And he's like, I'm like, dude, you are going to stay in shape. You are, you know, this is who you are now. Look at, look at the progress you've made, you know, 
And, you know, that's your standard. And, you know, he's obviously been able to do that and he's going to sustain that. So what are some practical steps that you did with him to like get him to a certain, a certain level that he's at now? Cause I mean, the guy has made a massive transformation. So we started him off with blood work that, that gave him a lot of insight on what's happening, what's not working right now. And I believe that drove his desire even more when you like people know, yeah, I'm not like in the best shape. I'm not so healthy. But when you see, oh shit, like the blood panel, okay, doesn't... yeah, this is red, 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 red. I got a gum mask going. So that was the first thing. And then we put together his nutrition protocol, his workouts. Let me say what was different with him or and they're not different in the things we did. Like every client is different, but we still give everyone like, um, the, like everyone has the same offer, so to say, right? It's not yeah. that we gave him more than the others and that's why he succeeded. Yeah. But yeah, of what was different was he's very proactive when he reaches out, extreme proactive. So it's all these, what do I do here? What do I do here? What do I do here? Decisions that we've helped him with, like do this, do this, optimize, take this, add this here, do this before you work out. Uh, we gave him also the ab routine. So we put like a specific six pack routine together for him. You know, people say like abs are built in the kitchen. Yes, that's right. But if you train the abs and they're more muscular, you start to see them at a higher body fat percentage. And because you see them at a higher body fat percentage, you don't have to cut down too low. And when you're bulking, you can bulk up and still see the abs at uh, that 14, 15, maybe 16% body fat. Yeah. So that was big. We also got in the DEXA scan that motivated him even more to say, hey, this is where I'm at. I got to get going. He had very clear goals, very precise timeline. So I would say it's less, and I can give you also something tactical, but it was less like just the tactics. It was the big concept were his, you know, there's in NLP and hypnosis, there's this uh, TOT model, test, operate, test, exit, where you look at something, you set the expectation, you test, and if you move forward, there's that forward momentum with desire. And yeah. for him, it was he had exactly the expectation by this day, I will be there. By this day, there. By this day, there. And so, uh, because he was so clear, as you said, what he wanted, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Uh, it just, it, it just uh, pulled him in that direction. The like, program, was... yeah, helped because he was so clear of his objectives. The program you put together gave him that rocket fuel to actually get there because he was so determined to hit his objectives. Yes. And he expected by then, by that date, I will hit that number. And he surpassed it. It's like, okay, can I surpass it even more? And now for him, it became like almost uh, a competitive addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, surpassed yeah. those targets. So that was like, if you want like one big thing, one big secret, that was big. If we stay more tactical uh, in the beginning, and I think he, he'll be okay if I share that. In the beginning, we, we gave him a certain number of macros and calories. And Jeremiah was like, he was walking more so he can eat more than what we gave. He's like, you know what? Okay, this is my goal, 10,000 steps, 12,000 steps, whatever that goal initially was for him. But I can do 16 or 18,000 and I can eat a few hundred calories more of chocolate and so on. And then he progressed like really slow initially. Like it was a very, very, very slow start. I think almost one month in, he had like one, two pounds down which for Jeremiah, you know, New Yorker, super fast. And I was like, man, look, we, we, you can't do that. It's like, you'll progress, but the, your mindset right now is, how can I um, make the least amount of changes and still make this work? How can I cheat the system and still win? I want you to shift it because you shouldn't be proud on, oh, I ate 400 more and I still dropped a little bit. Well, what if you didn't eat those 400 more, but you kept those steps high? How much faster would you get there? So really the, the name of the game is not how can I cheat the system and do as little as possible and still see results? How can I maximize my potential? And so that shift in perspective was what I believe really drove him there was like, all right, yes, this is what I need to do. And it, it was just a game changer from that moment it's, on. It's Everything changed. Off. Yeah, it took yes. off. 
And now he's ridiculously fit. I remember I went to his house a couple months ago and he answered the door. I'm like, fuck, man, who was that? Because <laughs> he was like so like, like I said, it was a sh- very short timeline. That's what I want to yes. get. Like, it's not like he was this was a three year like just grind. This was like a six month or whatever it was of short timeline of a massive transformation. And that's what people can do if they actually commit like Jeremiah and do the work. You can get results like that. And those results are going to be phenomenal. So, no, that's a great case study there. I'm glad we shared it. So that's the problem, Greg. What? What you just said. If people do the work, like a lot of people see his results. Yeah. And when they reach out, it's like, uh, but, you know, I'm traveling and I'm this. And it's like, well, but how did Jeremiah do it? It's like, well, you just see the outside. And then I screen share our data tracking system. And we see out of 30 days, 29 days hit all his numbers and that one day that it hit didn't hit it it's like he missed it by like you know one point or so so to say yeah right it's not like that he didn't do anything so he's so precise so ultra committed and that's why the dramatic result same like with ryan nickel right jeremiah is always like i, I want to beat ryan i want to beat ryan i want to beat ryan right i want to beat and break all the records but it's like with ryan if you look he's been with me two and a half years if we look at the system, he had maybe, you know, take away the days he was sick or injured. Like he had maybe, you know, two days a year that he didn't hit his targets. He's like that committed. He was like, oh, but I want to be a perfectionist. It's like, it's not about being perfect. It's like, that's the standards he demands of himself. And if you the, if you want those exceptional results in that time frame, you 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 can't you know you can't play basketball like someone on down the street. You got to play like a Kobe or like a Jordan to get there. And it's and it's not like the talent. It's like the commitment. And the same with Jeremiah. It's like look look at his steps. Look at his nutrition. Look how accurate he tracks. Look how committed he is. Like the cold plunges, the workouts. Like how many new PRs he sets. Everything. Like it's so dialed in with precision. So. Not about being a perfectionist. It just that's the standards he has for himself. And people only see the outcome and say, like, I want this. Okay, you want an A plus result with C minus effort. Not it's not gonna, gonna add up. No, nope. exactly. And that's why he's successful in business. It's like how you do anything is how you do everything. And that's that's another thing I feel like real estate investors can really gravitate towards you because they certainly got to where they're at financially, right? And then they're gonna go optimize for the health. And they've already done something financially so they can make that transition maybe easier than the average Joe, you know, on the street, et cetera. So as we start to transition into the, you know, the really end of the show here, you know, what, what is your program? Like what, what is, if someone wanted to work with you, you know, what does it look like from a practical standpoint? Like, like, how does it work? I know you're, you know, it's probably done mostly virtually. Just have you share, you know, kind of what that looks like from a general overview and then at the end, obviously, we'll 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 put a information in the podcast here on if they wanted to reach out, how they can reach out to you, et cetera. Yeah. So once again, starts with the blood work. There, there's onboarding material, assessments, a lifestyle audit to fill out, goal setting, uh, blood work, and we, we'll we'll be adding probably in the next thirty to sixty days some more advanced testing with heavy metals, mold, urine tests, and very cool stuff. But for now, there's a very advanced blood panel that the guys get in. And once that comes back, I uh, put together the plan and the protocol. I'll send it to the client and the client and I meet. And from there, we get started. And after that, I connect him with my team and they will take care of accountability, making sure it implements the action plan and does the work. Uh, There's live workouts over Zoom that the clients get initially to review the workouts, all is recorded. We have a doctor on the team for rehab, mobility, osteopathy, strength, conditioning. So all of that is covered as well. And basically they have unlimited tech support to me and my team as much as they want. We check in with them proactively three times a week via messenger, text, or whatever medium they prefer. There are two group calls per week that we have guest experts, hot seats, case studies, educational material, mindset. So whatever needs to be discussed right away, I host them personally. And there, there's some more stuff. We have a networking must mind group. So a lot of business owners in the group, I think 
they all want to network and must mind and raise capital and do deals together. So there's a group specifically for that where people have done already some good business together there. And even just with that, saw an ROI. And yeah, as I said, there's some more detailed stuff, but like that's the big, big picture. Yeah. Basically, blood work and assessments put together a plan set all KPIs up, they get a mobile app, they track every day, we review it and say, hey, this is missing, focus on this, change this, and tweak and optimize and go from there. Kind of like Formula One, you know, we look yeah, at it, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, come, come back, got to change those, uh, you know, g- uh, tires, some oil, some coaching, okay, let's go, race, 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 okay, come back, let's change this, tack, right? So that's, that's the way I want to see it. Well explained, my friend. If someone was interested, how do they get in touch with you or your website? Is it, well, let's do like a, a website. And then if they want to get in touch with you, we'll do two things in that way. You know, however they want to, you know, get in touch with you. Yeah, I'll send you the website so you can link it up wherever you put this video. Perfect. And best way is via Facebook. So that's where I'm most active and put out my best content. And people can reach out there. There's obviously more channels, LinkedIn, email, but Facebook is where I am most active. And the Facebook is just your first and last name. Yes. And so this is for the listeners here listening in the car or whatever. It's uh, M-A-U-R-O-S-T-A-R-A. So add him on Facebook and then we'll make sure that he gets us the link before this thing goes live. And I will throw the link in the show notes. And what is the what is the domain? Just the name? Because if someone's listening to this on like audio. Starathletes.fit. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. We'll sure I, I want to that- add one more thing, Greg, that I, I think before the show, you asked me like, why is it important for people to take care of their health? And yes, oh, yeah, know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of times you and maybe someone even listening here will say like, well, once I made it, then I will take care of my health. And once I get there, so there's always this, you know, the, this, the status quo is like, you first got to make money. And then you can do this and then this and then this. And so you have guys in their 20s, 30s that focus only on money, destroy their body. Then they get married, their body gets even worse. And eventually they take care of their health. And I feel like, like logically, it seems to make sense. Like I first need the money. I first need to provide. My status needs to go up and then I can take care of myself. But really, can I screen share something? Sure, buddy. So this is for people that don't know that this is an organic acid test. You you get it mailed home and you there's like a urine uh, sample there. You pee in and you send it back and they send you this back. So it's going to be a new test we're going to add. But right, right now I outsource people to it, but we want to bring it more internally. But either way, if you look, with that urine, with those urine markers, it really shows like, uh, or part of that test shows like your brain chemicals, neurotransmitters, so dopamine, norepinephrine, and you have also more here like serotonin, right? It breaks it down here and it shows you the pathways here. So you see vitamin B6, L-tyrosine, which is an amino acid for dopamine. And this is just a sample, like a regular sample. It's not from a client, so we're not sharing private data here. And if you look, again, neurotransmitter metabolites, so brain chemicals, uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and in this sample, right, very low markers. And what's going to happen is if you're a go-getter, high achiever, and you're super successful like a Jeremiah, maybe the, you know, the dopamine will be up, maybe not. And if your number is not there, and it's like, oh, first I got to make more money, and then this... Consider that if you fix this because you're nutrient deficient, whether it's you're not getting in the right vitamins and minerals, or your gut is not absorbing those nutrients, so you can take all the supplements you want and all the healthy organic food, but if your gut is not absorbing it, you're just pissing it out. And if your dopamine goes up, well, how will that impact and spill over to your business where now you're even more of a go-getter, more of a high achiever? Now you have norepinephrine here, right? When you get like super irritated, someone throws a ball at you and like, ah, you get super triggered and pissed. Well, maybe this is too low. Your, your ability to stay calm and control your emotions, which is super important in business, is maybe very low. And here's serotonin as well, uh, low. So if that profile here is messed up and not good, 
you're losing money every single day, every single week, every single year. That It's not optimized. And we don't know it, right? People have settled for the, 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 those emotions or not those emotions, those symptoms. It's like, oh, it's normal. I've been not motivated since years. I'm tired. It's like, wait, 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 wait. What if something is off here? And once we optimize this, now you're in fucking fire. Exactly. And that's what people don't get. It's like, yeah, growth is not linear in business. It's like this year I made 200K and next year I'll make 250. It's like, no, if you fix this, not that it's like a claim or a promise, but if you fix this and you're way more productive, the chance is super high that you'll make a bigger jump at the same time knowing that you were not going to fix this for whatever reason. It means you're you're missing out on that bigger jump. And that may be in 100K, 200K, 500K a year. We, we don't know it, right? Maybe everything is fine. For most guys, when we see the test results, it, it, it's not fine. So true, man. That was so well said. I'm glad we brought that up at the end. I totally forgot about that. But it's all, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and you prioritize your health. Other areas of your life will get better because health is the foundation. When I say without health, you got nothing, right? And I always use this analogy. It's like, you know, you can make a million dollars in one day, but if you are sick as a dog and you feel like shit, you're still going to feel like shit. Or if you're super unhealthy, you go make your million dollars in a day. You're still going to be slow. You're still not going to have energy. And that's why it's so important to prioritize your health, man. You've been an absolute gem to interview. I'm going to personally listen to this interview myself, even though it's my own show and I hate listening to myself, but the knowledge that was shared on here was so valuable. I'm going to just muster up the courage to hear my own self talk. So listen, Mauro, I really appreciate it, my friend. This is going to be a very popular episode and we'll make sure we have all the links in there if people want to connect with you after the show. And it has been an honor, my friend. I really appreciate it. Oh.